Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve combinations. Leak code number 77. So we're given two integers n and k, and we need to return all the possible combinations of k numbers chosen from the range 1 to n inclusive. And we can do this in any order. So say we were given n equals 4 and k equals 2. So that means our range is 1 to 4 inclusive. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we need to get combinations of two numbers. So all of our solutions will be length 2. So we have 1, 2, 1, 3. 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. And notice that it's not like permutations, so we don't want to have 2, 1 in here or 3, 1. As it says here, combinations are unordered, so these two are considered the same combination. So what we're going to do here is start at the top of n, which is 4, and we'd actually work our way down to the bottom, which is the number of 1. And so our main base case there would be basically when your value is 0, you wouldn't want to include that. The last thing you'd want to possibly include is the value of 1. Okay, so our solution solution starts as empty and we're considering the value of 4. So we don't have to pick it so we could just not pick it and move on. So let's say let's not use 4 over there and on the right side we'll say that we do use 4. So on this level we are considering 4 and on this level we're now considering 3. So both of these are now considering 3. So if we didn't pick four, we could also not pick three, so that's still empty, or we could pick three, and so we get just three. Over here, if we picked four, we could not pick three, so we get just that, or we could also pick both and we hit four and three. Now, this is actually a base case because our length is two here. There's no more numbers we could pick, so we could immediately basically say that this is a solution. So we'll append that to our list of solutions. So we have four, three, and draw a little check mark there to say like, we're just gonna backtrack from here there's no need to do that anymore so we could keep not using the numbers so we have nothing or we could start using two over here if we picked three we could just dodge two or we could hit another base case and get three and then two okay so that would be a check mark there we'd add that to our list of solutions over here that we have three two and a little check mark there saying we're just going to backtrack from there Okay, over here we could have just four and we could also have four and then two. That is another of our base cases. So we would append that solution there and we would back check from there. Okay, so anything at this level is considering one. Over here, we could totally dodge that. And so we get to the end. This level here is basically considering zero, but that's our base case. So he's basically just gonna say we found nothing. Over here, we actually hit the same issue here. So even if we pick one, well, that's still not a solution because we didn't have K numbers. And so we'd also have to go up from there. And as you can see, we really shouldn't have gone down this path at all. Like there was no reason to go down this path. So that means over here, we should have decided not to go left. So how could we have done that? Well, let's think about it. Here we have zero numbers. So we've picked zero numbers. How many numbers do we have left? Well, he was considering the value of two, which means there's basically two numbers left that you could pick. You could pick two or one. So if we've picked zero numbers, so we took nothing so far and we we also have two numbers that are left and how many numbers do we need total well we always need k so we need two look at this we've picked zero we have two numbers left and we need two so that's this level here we shouldn't go down this path of skipping the number because you have to pick the number we have two numbers left and you need two so we have to pick all the numbers from here on so when we're over here we're actually not going to go down this path at all and same thing over here we would need to pick that final one value. So we're not going to go down there at all. We would actually force it to go down this path. Okay. So we'll explain how to do that in the code, but it basically relies on calculating how many numbers you've picked so far. That's just the length of your solution, how many numbers that you have left and K, which is how many numbers that you need total. Okay, so this would be a solution. We'd also have three and then one. No need to go down the path of skipping that either. We'd have this one, we'd have this one. We would also have four and then one. Okay, so those are all of our solutions there. We have those six solutions and we've actually forced it so that the only base case is when you actually hit a valid solution. Okay, so we'd get our two global arrays, answer and solve are both equal to empty lists. Answer would be the thing that we return. It's gonna be our full answer there. and so solution will kind of dynamically grow and shrink to become these inner solutions. Okay, so we'll define our backtrack function. It takes an integer, so this is not an index because we're looking over a range of numbers. So we would start this at the first number, which is n, and our only base case would be if the length of our solution is equal to k, and so we want answer
answer.append a copy of the solution array. And from there, you just want to return. Okay, so the left path we'd want to go down is simply just backtrack of x minus one. So don't use the number, we don't append anything here, we just move on. But you don't know if you actually want to do this or not, because imagine skipping all of the numbers, well, you'd end up without k numbers, and so that's not a good path to go down. So we actually can calculate if you want to go down this path or not. So the amount of numbers we have left is equal to x. Say we're n equals 4 here, which it would be at the beginning. Well, then the numbers we have left are 4, 3, 2, and 1, aka there's 4 or x many numbers that we have left. Now say that we've picked, well, length of solution many numbers so far. So this is how many numbers we currently have picked. Well, the amount of numbers that we need is equal to k minus the length of solution. So we need k total, except basically what we still need to pick, however many we need total, minus what we've already picked. So this is basically what we require from here. So with these two variables, if left is actually greater than still need. If the amount of numbers we have left that we could pick is greater than what we still need to pick, well, that means we have an excess. That basically means, that means we have more numbers than we necessarily need. So you could optionally skip this step. Okay, you don't need this number. We don't have to pick this number. We could skip it. So let's go down the path of skipping it. That is what is going to force this to be the only base case. It forces us to have exactly k numbers numbers at the end. So that's the left path of not using the number. Let's actually use the number now. So the right path, solution.append x. So, okay, we've picked x. And now what we want to do is just backtrack on x minus one. So we'll consider the next number and work our way to the end. And after we're back from here, we have went down this full path of using it. We need to undo what we did here by solution.pop. So we take off that same number that we had temporarily chosen to use over there. Okay, so that is our backtrack function. All we'd have to do is just call this on backtrack at n. So we start at n and we'd work our way down to one and that's going to generate everything we need in answer. And we can just return that. If we were to run that, that will work. Okay, the time complexity of this, we are not going down any unnecessary paths. And so we're really just doing n choose k. So we're gonna write that as n choose k. Now that is kind of a complex factorial, but I don't think there's any interviewer that would really care about the factorial there. You would just call that n choose k. So that is the time complexity is basically big O of n choose k. And the space complexity of this, well, this is going to use recursion going depth wise. And the recursive call stack of this could go basically as deep as n. So you can imagine if we just choose not to pick so many of the numbers, if k is very, very small here, like k is one, you could basically just ignore all of the numbers and skip all of them and get to the end. That would be a space of big O of n. Okay, so here's the entire code, guys. Drop a like if this was helpful and have a great day. Bye-bye.